Dear friends and partners, thank you for joining us. I'm very proud to be here with you today for the introduction of our latest neurosurgical workflow solution. For the first time, we are launching a new offering completely digitally and directly from the heart of Zeiss here in Oberkochen, Germany. I'm thrilled that modern communications enable virtual events like this and allow us to stay in touch with you, even and especially in these very challenging times. At Zeiss, we believe innovation is in our DNA, and therefore, I think there could not be a more fitting place from which to host today's event than our Zeiss Museum. It is a place filled with innovation. Innovation that has shaped many aspects of our world over the course of our 170 year history. From our earliest microscopes that helped uncover many fascinating aspects of human cellular biology to the first photographs taken of our Earth from space and of the Moon's surface to the incredible wafer stepper lithography objectives with which the newest generation of iPhone processors are exclusively made. The innovations around us have truly made a profound impact. Most importantly though, we strive to continue on this path, innovating and setting new standards in order to help you, our partners in medicine, treat patients every day. So it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you our newest medical innovation, a promising imaging and digital cloud workflow solution that aims to support surgeons and pathologists such as yourselves strive for a more efficient and effective tumor resection. Please allow me to present to you our solution for in vivo digital pathology consultation, the Zeiss Convivo Suite. Welcome to this virtual event from Zeiss. I will be your host today, guiding you through the activities of this session on Zeiss Convivo. Continuous innovation, setting new standards in a continual open dialogue with healthcare providers to reconsider the standard of care. This is what Zeiss strives for. Consider a tumor treatment today. Could you imagine working on a tumor case without light and magnification? Zeiss visualization systems have always been at the forefront when it came to delivering optimal images in operating microscopes. Zeiss later introduced interoperative fluorescence, setting a second standard enabling advanced visualization. So it has been, and so it continues to be all about seeing. Now, Zeiss is just about to set yet another standard in this field with the new in vivo pathology suite, Convivo. Zeiss is adding a completely new approach to intraoperative visualization. Surgeons are now able to appreciate the tissue microstructure during surgery, share images amongst cross-functional medical teams, and receive real-time feedback, making it all about checking tissue in situ you'll have the opportunity to learn more about it in just a moment. Zeiss finally enables novel intraoperative radiotherapy treatment directly after tumor resection as the third part of the Zeiss tumor workflow. This is what see, check, and treat is all about. Now, please follow me to experience the new Zeiss Convivo suite in more detail. And by the way, Make sure to post your questions in the chat window. 
Experienced experts will answer your questions live at the end of this introduction. But rest assured that all questions will be answered in a written reply later on. One of the big challenges in the removal of a brain tumor is balancing gross total resection while preserving eloquent areas. For this surgical challenge, real-time information about the tissue composition could be crucial. In this video, you will see how the in vivo pathology suite Convivo from Zeiss is used during tumor resection. So, as you were able to see, Zeiss Convivo allows real-time feedback on tissue microstructure through digital pathology consultation. The in vivo pathology suite consists of two major components, obviously one in the OR, the Convivo surgical workplace to acquire images, and one in the pathology department, the Convivo pathology workplace to view them. With both systems communicating with each other, Connectivity is the basis for this solution and a fundamental prerequisite. If this piqued your interest, let's have a look at a demonstration of how it works technically from a workflow perspective. Let's start with the Zeiss Convivo surgical workplace. And for this introduction, we have the responsible product expert from Zeiss, Dr. Karl Kübler. Hello. Hello. I'm happy to provide a demonstration of our in vivo pathology suite, Zeiss Convivo. The surgical workplace utilizes confocal laser endomicroscopy technology based on a scanning mechanism miniaturized into the probe tip. This allows to seamlessly integrate imaging of cellular structures into the surgical workflow. The scanner probe is designed to allow direct and safe placement of the tip on the tissue. The resulting confocal image is created by scanning the field of interest with low intensity light. By the way, we are speaking about a resolution that allows to image cellular structures. How is this possible? Prior to imaging, a fluorescent dye is injected intravenously at the appropriate moment so that it disperses into the extracellular space in the region of the tumor. Point by point, the laser light scans through the tissue and excites the fluorescent signal of the dye. The lens system inside the scanner probe collects only the light from the selected focal plane. This way, cellular microstructure can be visualized and a digital image is created. The focus depth can be adjusted to a level of up to 200 microns inside the patient's tissue. This technology allows the acquisition of images from a virtually unlimited number of locations in the situs without disrupting the tissue. When taking images, you can choose from a variety of different capture modes. These include series images to capture frames in a row, temporal information, or the C-stack to capture different focus depths of the tissue. You can also browse through recorded images and sort out those with low image quality with just one click, thanks to the AI-based quality filter. If you would like to start the live stream with your neuropathologist, simply press Start Consultation. A green bar will appear to confirm a connection. The in vivo pathology suite will transfer the digital image. 
With the Zeiss Convivo Pathology Workplace, cross-functional medical team members are able to immediately view the recorded images from their workplace. In other words, the Pathology Workplace allows remote access to in vivo images captured in the OR to support the neurosurgeon. In addition, the suite makes patient and case information available where needed. Also, the Pathology Workplace allows you to scroll back through the last 50 frames and review areas of interest. Relevant images can be saved as needed. With a connectivity solution that sets itself apart from conventional hardwired systems, all of these options are readily available to you, anytime, anywhere. Simply log in to the Pathology Workplace with your size ID using the device of your choice. Simple and secure. Since the Zeiss Convivo Pathology Workplace is a web-based solution, there is no need for additional hard or software. So this was a quick introduction from my side. I'm looking forward to answering any questions you might have in the live chat after the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Kubler, for this insightful demonstration. Just imagine the benefits for your surgical workflow. You might also ask yourself, what do neurosurgeons who have experienced the Convivo say about this technology? Let's listen to what Dr. Francesco Acerbi from the Besta Institute in Milan has to say about it. At the moment, the uh, exchange of information from the operative room to the anatomopathology is uh, complicated because there are two different departments and uh, the, the samples need to uh, travel from one place to the other. So you need to wait until the, the, the sample is uh, uh, available for the pathologist to be analyzed and then there is the analysis process and then there is uh, the uh, response that needs to come back to the OR. So it's a long process and it's a difficult process. The digital exchange of images uh, through the Convivo system will be very important to simplify this process because there will be a direct exchange of information, very, very easy, very fast. And now, I would like to hand it over to Frank Zeitzinger, Head of Visualization at Carl Zeiss Meditech, who will go through your questions together with experienced clinical experts. Dr. Spetzler, Emeritus President and CEO of Barrow Neurological Institute, has played a formative role in numerous advances in neurosurgery. His commitment to technical excellence, surgical innovation, and making the very best neurosurgical treatments available to patients drove the pivotal publication about the application of confocal endomicroscopy in neurosurgery in 2010. Dr. Mark Pruhl is the Director of Neurosurgery Research at the Barrow Neurological Institute. He's had the opportunity over many years to see a wide variety of technologies that come through his laboratory. Based on the imaging capabilities of confocal endomicroscopy, he ranks it as probably the most exciting technology that he has seen in his career. Professor Karl Michael Schäbisch is the Deputy Director of Neurosurgery at the University Clinic in Regensburg. As a world-renowned expert for fluorescence-guided techniques in the removal of CNS tumors, he has a clear vision for the integration of confocal fluorescence microscopy in his surgical workflow for the purpose of obtaining digital biopsies. Professor Jürgen Schlegel has been heading the Institute of Neuropathology at the Technical University in Munich for more than 20 years. Early on, he drove the establishment of telepathology as a service for smaller neurosurgical institutions. One of his major research interests is the advancement of novel methods of neuropathology that provide high-resolution images at the cellular level, such as confocal fluorescence microscopy. If you would like to receive more information, please contact your local Zeiss sales representative or visit our website for more information. For example, case examples of histological examination based on H&E stained images versus confocal images. So, to conclude, thank you for spending some time with me. And now, enjoy the live expert panel where your questions will be answered. Welcome to the Q&A session here from Oberkochen with our esteemed panelists, uh, Dr. Schäbisch, Dr. Schlegel, and Dr. Kübler. Um, we have the first questions here already in our, our chat. 
Um, and maybe let me start with Dr. Shebesh Yu on the first question that we have here. The question says, how does a typical surgery with Convivo look like? And how do you integrate it into your surgical workflow? If you could speak about that. Yeah, uh, thank you, um, Mr. Reitzinger, for the introduction. And thanks for having me again. It's a pleasure for me to support um, um, this presentation of this very innovative and I think very important technique. So um, the first question was, um, how does a typical surgery um, with integration of Convivo uh, look like? Well. We have experience in our department that is the best way to um, position the, the corpus of the Convivo system, um, which is comparable in size and designed to a surgical ultrasound machine uh, near the feet of the patient. Um, and um, this makes sure that the surgeon, when he's looking up from the microscope, has a direct uh, straight view onwards the screen of the Convivo system the cable, uh, which um, basically um, has to be draped from the scrub nurse, um, like before skin incision, is very long. And once the lesion um, or the targeted area has been approached, uh, the surgeon can simply take the, the probe of the convivo system, which um, has haptical features of a succinator. We, neurosurgeons are very familiar with that kind of haptic feature, um, is just placed on the targeted area and then the surgeon can look up from the microscope and has the direct view on what's the screen. Once in a while there have to be done certain adjustments of the laser um, strength or the light intensity, um, but um, all in all it is very, very simple and easy to integrate the Convivo into the surgical armamentarium besides navigation microscope and whatever machines we have in the OR. Um, the second question uh, I think was uh, how um, can we integrate the Convivo performances into our surgical workflow? I think this is very important, maybe it's the most important question because um, uh, at the moment still under scientific evaluation we um, have to find out the benefits and the limitations of it. At the moment, in our experience, is the best once the lesion has been approached, then we put the probe, the Convivo probe, on the lesion. And um, by this, we make sure that there is few amount of blood and few amount of erythrocytes because this is confounding the uh, image quality significantly. So in the beginning of the surgery, before we start to dissect or to resect the tumor or whatever lesion we approach, then is the best way to integrate it. And of course, at the end of surgery, when we want to detect any like hidden or tiny or obscure uh, tumor infiltration zones in the walls of the resection cavity, um, then we also uh, are very interested in uh, evaluating Convivo. So beginning and end of surgery. Thank you for that. And then um, obviously the images are being transferred to the pathology department. Uh, Dr. Schlegel, <laughs> For you in, in neuropathology department, there's one question here. Where do you, as a neuropathologist, see the biggest advantages and challenges of the new remote workflow for, for you as a neuropathologist? Yeah, from my side also, thank you very much um, for the invitation to have a chance to um, join uh, this uh, interesting uh, meeting. And uh, so um, uh, the, I see the major advantages uh, of the technique on the side of the neurosurgeons. Uh, since uh, for neurosurgery, uh, it is possible to have an assessment of the operation system um, uh, or the uh, operation CETOS, uh, not only from the uh, microscopic view, but now also from a histological or a cytological view that might allow uh, more radical resection. Uh, for us as neuropathologists, um, the advantage is that we are more involved in the operation. I loved it always uh, to be uh, in the operation rooms and to follow the neurosurgical uh, operations and uh, now we have a chance uh, to do that uh, by using the uh, pathology suite of Convivo. 
Uh, and um, yeah, honestly, so during the last uh, weeks and months, we learned to use digital um, um, uh, uh, devices uh, to uh, follow uh, such uh, approaches. And therefore, I think uh, there's a great chance to learn more about each other. Uh, I think the uh, major challenges will be in the next future to learn from each other. I, I'm pretty sure, and um, uh, we have here the experience from several operations, and uh, I worked with uh, comparable systems before. Um, so I know that we, uh, and that means neurosurgeons and neuropathologists, we have to work together to learn more about uh, the uh, um, the, the opportunities and uh, the, the possibilities uh, in this uh, technique. I expect that when we learn more about, a, for example, about the kinetics of the staining uh, dye of the sodium fluorescein, then we will get more and perhaps the most interesting information uh, from the systems. So we have to learn a lot and we have to learn it together, neurosurgeons and neuropathologists uh, together. I think these are the, from my view, the major advantages and the uh, major challenges uh, by using this technique. Thank you, Dr. Schlegel. Um, I, I think that the learning aspect of, of um, this new technology also brings us now to the next question that we have here in, in the chat. And I'd like to address that to, to Dr. Kubler as the, as the size expert. Um, so we know that Regensburg is using the device, um, Professor Schlegel, Schlegel in, in Munich is using the device. Um, who else in, in, the, in the field is using it? So who are the current users in the clinical field and how can interested parties be connected to them? Yeah, thank you, Frank. Um, so I think, um, you know, as you saw over the last couple of years, we worked with several centers globally who have now gained some experience both using device surgically, but also in interpreting the confocal images. And, and clearly, you know, we want to uh, connect new users with this knowledge base and therefore we have developed a, a special offer for customers who now want to get early access to the pathology suite and that's the product we're talking about today right and this offer actually combines the product with a range of services that ensure a fast adoption uh, of this technology and the workflow into your personal workflow and one very special supporting tool in, in this package is that we provide a, a membership to an expert moderated Convivo community where new, uh, new customers can uh, exchange with experts and, and learn from each other, but also from the experts. And, and so I just say, you know, it's, it's a community and, and such a community can only work, obviously, when everyone contributes. So we, we not only, you know, want to give information, but we also would expect that new users want to participate in, in, in pushing, you know, this new uh, technology and we expect that every member also shares a certain amount of case. It's a real give and take approach. Thank you, Carl. Um, on, the, on the next question, maybe I'll revert back to Dr. Shebesh. Um, there's a question, um, as a surgeon, why would you want to add this solution to your toolbox? Yeah, thank you. This, this, of course, I think is the most important question above all. Um, yeah, still under scientific uh, evaluation, but um, I am convinced that um, the Convivo, the confocal endomicroscopy, has a great potential in helping us improving the quality of uh, resection, be it in uh, glioma surgery, metastasis, uh, or in even in spinal surgery, maybe one day. Um, I think there are two major points, and both points are um, sharply addressed in the current scientific evaluation. The first is, um, is it possible to detect um, hidden or obscure um, tumor remnants uh, after we have exploited all our other um, surgical tools like fluorescence-guided surgery with 5-ALA, fluorescein sodium, uh, navigation, ultrasound, or even intraoperative MRI, but I am convinced that the Convivo system allows us to even detect uh, very hidden, very tiny tumor remnants, and I think we can enhance our surgical performance and our quality of resection significantly. And the second 
major point is, but I think this is more prone to Professor Schlegel because he's he has a huge experience uh, with that. Is is it possible to um, well not to replace the frozen section, but to change the face of the fro frozen section in order to have a digital biopsy in situ biopsy that we can offer real time to the pathologist and he can. Um, give us immediate feedback. This will speed up the process of, of frozen section significantly. And um, by uh, these two major points, I think when we can confirm um, the benefit, then I think confocal and microscopy will enter ORs globally. Thank you, Dr. Shepesh. And maybe let me, you know, uh, address this question directly to Dr. Schlegel. Um, you know, how, how do you feel? Where do you feel could uh, the, the confocal and the microscopy uh, replace a, a frozen section and maybe add on to that uh, what type of pathological diagnosis can be made based on a confocal image? Yeah, this uh, um, important question. I'm pretty sure that um, um, after the learning uh, period I mentioned um, in my answer to the question before, I'm pretty sure that uh, Convivo has the potential to replace uh, the frozen uh, section since uh, the intraoperative assessment of the um, histological situation uh, is uh, or will be much easier uh, then. Um, so, therefore, I'm pretty sure that um, we will be able to replace uh, frozen sections uh, um, by using the Convivo image and uh, depending on the workflow that will also speed up the time uh, we have between uh, the uh, intraoperative uh, situation and the diagnosis uh, of the neuropathologist. Um, but uh, in addition, um, I am pretty sure that we will learn a lot during uh, the next uh, month um, uh, using this uh, technique and uh, we will um, uh, recognize um, other um, um, uh, uh, parts of the uh, technique that will allow us uh, to to get in, uh, additional information that we do not get at the moment from the frozen section and that we have to wait for uh, for immunohistochemistry and molecular um, uh, analysis uh, and uh, this will be the challenge for the next future to to implement um, uh, these um, uh, uh, techniques to the convivo system. So, so um, not to, to, to understand that wrongly. Um, so, we will not perform molecular diagnosis with convivo, but we will learn from, as I said, from the kinetics of the staining uh, and uh, uh, of the fluorescent dye and so on. Uh, we will learn more about the uh, behavior of the tumor in Z2. And this is a great chance we haven't had uh, before. And these informations, uh, I would uh, say this information could be similar to information we get at the moment only from very specialized uh, um, uh, investigation techniques. Thank you, Dr. Schlegel. Um, so as, as we know uh, in our personal lives, but also in our, our professional lives, change brings with it uh, adaptation and, and, and new workflows and things like that. So Carl, maybe you can speak to this. Um, you know, when, when we bring a new medical technology into the OR, um, you know, the team has to change and adapt to that. Um, does SICE offer any, any special training for the surgeons and, and the surrounding teams to uh, be able to quicker adopt to this new technology? Yeah, definitely, Frank. I mean, uh, we, are, we are very well aware of the learning curve that is associated with implementing such a new device and a new workflow into the workflow of a cross-functional team. So therefore, for this reason, we established a learning path uh, that supports new users with application training, shadowing programs, and workshops. Um, and, and that's both for surgeons and a neuropathologist. And um, obviously, I mean, this will not replace gaining practical experience hands-on with the device, but we believe that with these tools, at least um, you will be um, ready to work with the device very, very fast and efficient. Mm -hmm. Great, uh, thank you, Carl. Maybe, Carl, we, we continue with the with the next question, and then we can hand over to Dr. Schäbisch and Dr. Schlegel. Uh, but there's a question: Which other medical applications do you see Convivo being used for in in the future 
besides neurosurgery? Has SAIS made any any uh, has SAIS put any thought behind that at this point? Yeah, clearly. I mean, um, there's a, a lot of potential, right? I mean, we're not uh, limited to neurosurgery. Just I mean, neurosurgery has uh, you know it's, it's our our focus in in many areas, but. Definitely, one could think about applications in the um, uh, ENT uh, for screening of oral cancer, for example, or in, in the laryngeal area uh, to support resections there. Um, in, 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 in breast cancer, such technologies are, are evaluated. Um, um, but yeah, so yes, there are uh, quite some application fields. Okay. Uh, maybe Dr. Shevich, I, I know you, you mentioned this in, in one of your earlier answers uh, as well, that there could be a, a wider field of application for that. Do you confirm what, what Carl said or from your experience with the sodium fluorescein, is there certain applications that might be better suitable? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely agree. Um, there has been, uh, as far as I know, there have been several um, reports so far um, combining uh, neurosurgical and ENT purposes for uh, especially like oral cancer. There has been a very, very interesting German uh, group uh, paper coming from a German group. And um, in my experience, since we have uh, very good interdisciplinarity with our ENT surgeons, especially in skull-based surgery. I think there are absolute um, uh, connections to other disciplines. Maybe even in spinal surgery, um, we can find, but to be honest, I don't really have any experience in spinal surgery so far with this system, but I think I'm absolutely convinced that we can, can apply it very beneficially and we will have a huge field of uh, interdisciplinarity with a, with a confocal endomicroscopy. Okay, thank you, Dr. Shibish. And maybe the, the same th uh, question, Dr. Schlegel, um, you know, from, from your pathology perspective, do you see certain applications that might make more sense and, and which, which of these uh, could potentially be visualized with a confocal image? Yeah, so honestly, I'm not a pathologist, but a neuropathologist, <laughs> but uh, um, uh, I also uh, I agree with the answers given um, by um, Dr. Schiebisch and uh, Dr. Kübler. I think that uh, it's not restricted uh, to neurosurgery to use uh, this system, uh, since uh, um, there are several disciplines, uh, especially uh, in um, uh, surgical oncology, uh, where it would be helpful to have have uh, the convivo at hand uh, for the operations. And the question is always the same uh, at the resection margins. Are is there two more left? Uh, um, and uh, do we need to, to have a few centimeters or millimeters more uh, resection? And so I, therefore, I think uh, it's not restricted, uh, definitely not restricted uh, to neurosurgery. And uh, honestly, uh, we have great interest from our colleagues from pathology here. They are also interested uh, to see what we are doing with this system. And so I think also uh, the pathologists would uh, learn in the same way as we neuropathologists have learned in connection to the neurosurgeons. Oh, great. Thank you, Dr. Schlegel. Um, Dr. Schiebisch, the next question, probably you're the best one to, to answer this. Um, there's a question from um, uh, saying, once the fluorescence dye has been given, how much time does the surgeon have to, to view the, the, the tissue? Yeah, thank you for this very important question. Absolutely important because um, to be honest, we are still finding, well, addressing this issue uh, prospectively right now. At the moment when we have fluorescent uh, sodium administered for, uh, let's say, simple fluorescence guided surgery with a microscope, with a yellow filter, then the best time point is approximately 30 to 45 minutes prior to skin incision. And then we have an effect of the staining, like, let's say, for two or three hours. So normally, uh, glioma uh, resection is done within this time. But for um, the purpose of confocal endomicroscopy, um, I think, or the first uh, experiences have shown that um, the shorter the time interval between injection and um, achievement of the neuroimaging by the confocal endomicroscopy, the shorter the time interval, the better the contrast, the better um, the quality of the image. So 
we still have to find out uh, when is the best time point and can we re-inject for uh, confocal endomicroscopy purpose and uh, in which dosage and so on. But um, yes, I'm sure that we will have the first answers in a couple of months. Great. Thank you, Dr. Shevish. Um, so these were all the questions we were able to find within the, um, within the um, chat function. Um, I don't see any, any new ones. So um, for now, um, Dr. Shebisch, Dr. Schlegel, thank you very much for your participation in the early phase of the, uh, the, the evaluation of the device for the continuous usage, but also for your, your time today. Um, I, I know this always takes time out of your busy schedule. Um, Carl, thank you very much from, for, for you as well uh, for, for giving the, the technical and, and the size uh, focused insights. And then thank you uh, to everybody um, who, who stayed with us during this presentation. I hope we were able to, to present the uh, digital pathology suite Convivo in an in a interesting fashion. Um, if you have additional questions, please feel free to raise them to your local size representative, um, send them in. They will get forwarded to Dr. Kubler and his team, uh, who then will, will be able to answer them in a written, written forward, format. Welcome to the question and answer uh, session we have here with our esteemed panel of experts in, in terms of a pathology and neuropathology um, um, input and, and a specialist. We have Professor Schlegel from, from Munich here on the team. So we're, we're set up well to answer all your questions. Uh, let me, with that being said, let me start out with, with uh, the first question that comes from Dr. Ray. He asks, and I let me address this maybe to Dr. Schlegel, um, how does one learn the image interpretation perspective um, as to my knowledge, we have not been familiar with scanning images appearance and what's the validation for this new concept? Yeah, thank you very much for this question. And first of all, thank you very much for inviting me for this interesting session. And I hope I can answer these questions. So that's um, uh, the question is absolutely correct. Uh, we are in a still in a learning a phase where we have to learn more about uh, the images we get from the uh, Convivo system. And uh, so uh, this is um, uh, in, we, this is a flanking uh, scientific uh, approach we follow. And at the moment in my lab, so we have seen a lot of uh, these uh, um, um, Convivo images, but uh, at the moment we, we uh, do the conventional diagnostics in parallel uh, to the uh, Convivo uh, images. And so, uh, there are cases where it's pretty easy since uh, the, the 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 pictures we get from the convivo system look similar to what we expect from the conventional histopathology or let's say at the end from the uh, cryostat sections uh, we perform for the intraoperative diagnostics but we uh, also see uh, uh, pictures uh, that do not look like uh, what we expect and that we have to learn. On the other hand, we, we observe that there are uh, several aspects we see with the Convivo system we haven't seen before in our histology uh, stains. Uh, and this is pretty clear since we now have a picture of the tumor in situ and that's different to what we saw before we we, we handle with with all our techniques we handle um, uh, artifacts since uh, the tissue is cut out and it is frozen or formalin fixed and therefore it's artificial and that's a great chance but it's correct we have to learn and uh, uh, we are not uh, at the end absolutely familiar with what we see with the convivo but I'm pretty sure that uh, over the time we will learn more and more and uh, see the advantages of uh, this uh, uh, intra vitro um, um, uh, procedure of diagnostics. Great. Th <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Schlegel. Um, Dr. Spetzler, maybe I can address the next question to you. The question asks, uh, what is your take on the relevance of this new solution for neurosurgery and in particular to neuro-oncology? Uh, thanks. I appreciate the question. I'd like to make one comment on the previous question too. We've been using this for quite a few years now. 
And I must say, it's uh, too bad Jenny Eschenbacher, our neuropathologist, is not on this forum. For by looking at the cases we have collected, um, it becomes more and more familiar and easier and easier to distinguish uh, the pathology. I would say um, the drawback of the pathology is that you're looking at very, very small specimens, and obviously uh, the depth you achieve is uh, very, very limited. Um, but I would find it quite useful that when you think you have removed all of the tumor and you are in an area where you have specific concern, um, it is nice to know whether you're really de dealing with what looks like normal neural tissue, which is easy uh, to visualize, or whether you are looking at abnormal tissue, which you ought to remove. Thank you, Dr. Spetzler. <clears throat> Dr. Poole, you've been working with the system also for, for some time. Um, so so the, question, the next question I'd like to pose to you, um, you know, one of the, the users here asks, I'm interested if besides tumor resection, there are any, are any other fields of application outside of neuro-oncology? Do you see any other tissue that could be potentially be analyzed with this technology? Um, yes, let me just uh, comment on the, on the last question too, because the, the gastroenterologists have been using this technology for a long time, much longer than we have. And they have forged through collecting many, many images uh, that they then compare to their uh, conventional histology. And so in many places around the world, um, this sort of technology is used to, um, to um, filter out uh, patients with precancerous or cancerous lesions in the gut and going straight forward to the area to biopsy with, uh, with the fluorescence labeling. And so what they get, they get, you know, a huge number of images that they, uh, that they sift through uh, immediately. And just by their experience of collecting these images, which is what we've got to do, is that's how they then have compared their, their fluorescent images to their to their conventional images just by collecting a huge number of what is essentially um, an atlas of, of gastrointestinal images. So that is actually underway uh, in several of the centers, for instance, our center, in collecting these images and to compare them directly to conventional histology by various means, by uh, personal inspection, by uh, by algorithms uh, that uh, compare the, 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 the two different types of images. So, um, and, and to just add on to what Dr. Spetzler said, I think that it also, the, the, the technology is very important because it can tell us where to stop. It, it can tell us where not to go. For instance, you could use this, this imaging on an eloquent area uh, in the brain that is exposed in the craniotomy and immediately before any surgery is done or anything, inspect that area to determine if there is abnormal pathology there, abnormal histological uh, um, images that are coming up. So um, to the other question that was asked of me, have we looked at this in other realms of science? We have. So we've looked at it um, for blood flow uh, in small vessels, We've looked at how thrombi start and how uh, various um, obstructions uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, um, emboli form in, in vessels and uh, everything up from uh, capillaries to uh, relatively small arteries. Um, and we've also looked at it in terms of labeling specific um, antibodies that are within the laser range of the, uh, of the uh, instrument, so within the blue laser range. Um, so those are, those are areas uh, that we've looked at. We've also looked at it in terms of combining it with other fluorescent dyes. Um, for instance, uh, NBDG or uh, 5ALA uh, and these sorts of, uh, these sorts of uh, components where we look at the where we look at the tumor tissue plus the vascular tissue. 
Um, th thank you, Dr. Pro. Um, then the next question really goes more on, on, on the side of the pathology end. So Dr. Schlegel, maybe for you on, on neuropathology side, um, how did you gain experience in interpreting these confocal images? And do you have recommendations for you, you new users on, on how to learn? Yeah, I, I think uh, that question has been answered in part uh, before by me and uh, um, uh, by uh, the, uh, our two neurosurgical colleagues. Um, uh, since uh, uh, we compared uh, the, the, the Convivo images with uh, what we saw with our conventional uh, neuropathological uh, stains, and it's absolutely correct. This is a kind of learning uh, phase uh, where you have to collect uh, uh, as much uh, material uh, as possible. And uh, over a time, it's really, um, as uh, Dr. Spetzler already mentioned, after a time, uh, um, you become more and more familiar uh, with the um, images uh, presented by the Convivo uh, system. Um, uh, at several sites, uh, the uh, colleagues are working on a kind of atlas, and this is the first uh, point where you can compare the pictures uh, in yeah in an atlas um, uh, and to to see what you expect. But at the end, you need uh, this personal learning. You have to see these images, and that's not only true for convivo. That's also true for conventional histopathology. You have to learn it uh, by seeing, uh, and over time, you become more and more familiar. And that's also true for the convivo system. <clears throat> Makes sense. Th sense. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Schlegel. Um, maybe as an add-on, um, let me revert also to to Karl Krübler. Um, the, the, the specialist at SAIS, Carl, um, is, is there anything that, that SAIS is offering along those lines um, to connect users with each other um, and, and share experiences? Yes, uh, thanks, Frank. Uh, definitely, you know, I mean, you see, we can see from these questions that this is, uh, uh, you know, something that comes to the mind of, of new users immediately. How can I interpret this? How can I kind of get used to something that is so new to me, my team and my, my workflow? And we thought about this quite quite a bit, um, and and we offer two things. I mean, firstly, um, we have a, a early access package now for users who are interested in gaining access now to this technology. And in this um, package, we also include um, membership to a expert moderated community, um, where we share uh, cases, and uh, we want to provide a platform where um, new users and all users can exchange. And this uh, community should be in a way that new users contribute also their cases and uh, can learn from, from, from the rest of, of the users globally. So that's number one. And uh, number two, we also came up with a dedicated learning path uh, for new users. Um, which includes application training, shadowing programs, and also workshops for both the surgeon and neuropathologist, so that we really hope to, you know, bring new users up to speed, at least to a level where we're close to where uh, we are now with, with uh, more experienced people uh, that have been use, using the system in the past. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Carl. Maybe I'll, I'll stay with you for this next question from Dr. Eng from Manila. He's a pathologist. He says he's interested in doing clinical validation studies in parallel with current standard of pathology practice. Um, any any recommendation uh, what he should do or who he should contact? Yeah, I think you know um, as we heard, we, we are already quite um, um, you know busy, let's say, collecting all this data. And right now we are focusing on uh, markets in Europe and uh, in in the US. So we are also limited from. Uh, regulatory perspective but um, as always you know I mean it makes sense to to discuss these things and um, uh, I guess we, we should just uh, you know stay in touch get in contact and then um, discuss possibilities how we can uh, work something out and how you could be, become you know part at least of this early access program once the product is available in in uh, Manila so okay thank you Carl Dr. Pruhl what benefits do you see given that this is an in vivo visualization device? 
Well, I think that it um, improves the rapidity um, that you can get an interpretation from the from the pathologist and also directly for the neurosurgeon. The neurosurgeon will need to become uh, familiar with these images as well. It's it's got to be a learning uh, curve uh, for that person, as as Dr. Schlegel says. And as Dr. Spetzler says, really, the, you, you get a feeling for these images the more you use them. So the, the benefit of the in vivo is that you, you get a, a um, maybe not a diagnosis, but you see what the tissue is. You, you get a, a, a histological, a histoarchitectural um, uh, impression by, um, by a, a, a on-the-fly uh, image that uh, you get uh, immediately, and so it, it speeds the it speeds the surgery. Um, you you don't need to wait for a frozen section to come back in an area, as Dr. Spetzler says, where uh, where an invasive tumor such as a GBM or an astrocytoma may very much look like like normal tissue, and so you don't want to go on, and so that halts the surgery. Uh, in, in many respects. And so uh, also in terms of speed is you can get uh, a, a pathology interpretation that could be from the pathologist no matter where they are. It's, it can be ported to, uh, to, to, to a cell phone, to an iPhone, and that those images uh, analyzed by the pathologist immediately. So I, I think it really improves the, the whole surgical pathology workflow as you as you scan these, as you learn to scan these uh, areas with, with the probe. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Schlegel, what you should like to add onto that, there's, there's a question that uh, relates to this somehow, you know, um, how can that connection to the OR with a live image stream influence your way of working? I think Dr. Pruhl touched upon a few things already, but maybe if you can add your insights to that as well. Yeah, uh, I'm, um, I, I think definitely uh, um, our uh, kind of working uh, changes just at the moment, and uh, I, I, I want to corroborate um, what Doc, uh, Dr. Pruhl just mentioned. So um, we are on the way to digitalize um, pathology, uh, and uh, so, therefore, the Convivo workflow fits very well uh, in actual modern ways to reorganize uh, um, the pathological um, um, organization and 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 uh, the the, the uh, surgical pathological uh, cooperation. And um, please let's, let me briefly mention, we just learned, uh, and at that pretty moment we learned um, uh, during this uh, convivo, uh, excuse me, COVID, corona uh, time, uh, we, we, we perform a, a, um, a congress digitally. So we, we learn more and more uh, to work in a different way, to communicate in a different way. And uh, so um, uh, this uh, definitely changes the way, um, uh, the way we uh, work. And I think it's absolutely necessary for pathology and neuropathology uh, to, to go this digital way since this is the uh, way of the future. Okay, thank you, Dr. Uh, Schlegel. <clears throat> Dr. Spetzler is back, I heard, so let me um, maybe address this, this uh, question again to him that I, asked, that I posted uh, earlier. Dr. Spetzler, is this solution bringing the cross-functional team of surgeon and pathologist closer to got together, or and how can this be uh, beneficial? Well, I think the, the first thing we really have to look at is the workflow. And when you consider the fact that a frozen section in the best of times takes uh, 20 minutes to 45 minutes, 50 minutes uh, to get a result back, the fact that you can scan something, look at the monitor, have your neuropathologist look at the monitor at the same time is to me the, the greatest advantage because it speeds up the operation. The longer an operation, 
the greater the risk of the operation. So anything that speeds it up is uh, very important. The ability to uh, communicate with your neuropathologist or other neuropathologists uh, in an immediate fashion has an incredible advantage. So I think um, the more that we learn about this, the more that we uh, can utilize the information we get, the more we do like face recognition, so where tumor patterns uh, that are very obvious become easy for anybody to learn and, and interpret, I think that is truly the, the future. It is digital, as was previously said. Thank you for that, Dr. Spetzler. <clears throat> Maybe let me let me stay with you. I, I, I know you also have some um, insights into radiation therapy. This, this next question pertains to that, and we can certainly then shift to somebody else as well. But the, Dr. Ray is asking, um, how are planning radiation doses in close proximity to the tumor bed? Is it again safe to radiate in C2 sort of? Um, I don't know how if, if you can if you can talk about that, Dr. Spitzer. Yeah, I, I am I am uh, not convinced. Uh, that uh, that is the best way to go, but clearly the advantages of in situ radiation is the fact that you're sparing all the normal tissues and that the effectiveness of radiation is obviously has to do with the proximity to where uh, it is produced. So the question to me is always if you add in situ radiation to a tumor bed, um, what are you sparing and what are you hitting? Uh, mm -hmm. Is it any different than if you take a, a surgical tool and just resect that tissue? But the advantage of having radiation not affect the normal tissues and the healing process is very attractive. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, the next question comes from Dr. Eng again in, in Manila. Manila. I think, uh, Dr. Schlegel, this is um, maybe targeted to you. Um, can the fluorescent tags be used to target analogous protein targeted by standard IHCs to differentiate tumor from normal tissue? So I'm not pretty sure if I uh, uh, understood uh, the, the, the question, but uh, um, the question was uh, if to target uh, the uh, um, protein molecules with that um, uh, fluorescent uh, dye. Yes. And this uh, uh, clearly is a, um, um, a possibility to further develop the technique. Uh, so uh, the, the, the problem is we, we need uh, the, um, the, the allowance to, to, to work with these uh, molecules, but uh, this is uh, clearly an advantage and one could uh, imagine um, uh, the the labeling of tumor specific antibodies with uh, fluorescent dyes uh, and therefore have a chance to to distinguish uh, on a single cell level between tumor cells uh, and uh, normal non neoplastic cells okay thank you for that um, the next uh, question comes from dr ray um, maybe dr Pruhl, if you can can speak to this uh, Dr. Ray is asking if uh, confocal images are part of neuropathology training programs in the U.S. and EU, um, and does the fluorescein dye that is used just prior to examination, is that proprietary, and what sort of cells does it bind to? And um, you also mentioned that there's two other dyes, um, I think um, uh, neurolin and glial. Um, can, can you speak to that? Um, I probably cannot answer uh, whether definite, definitively whether uh, the training for uh, fluorescent images is a part of uh, pathology or neuropathology training, um, residency training in the United States. I, I think it's going to be uh, there, as Dr. Schlegel uh, has said, there, there have been conferences. Uh, even our neuropathologist, Dr. Eschbacher, has been to teaching uh, um, conferences uh, and uh, trainings uh, where she has trained uh, uh, pathologists and uh, residents uh, on these images, and I have been to meetings where that has also occurred. Um, that occurs very much in the in in the gastrointestinal uh, world of pathology, uh, and I would expect that it will become a great part of of neuropathology. Um, so uh, on the subject of uh, fluorescein. 
Floor scene is not proprietary. Uh, is a, it is an FDA approved uh, drug, has been for uh, decades. And floor scene does not necessarily label the cells. Uh, there are a few cells that get labeled by floor scene. Those may be old cells. They may be uh, tumor cells that are sort of falling apart. Uh, that are uh, uh, disintegrated, and those seem to get highlighted by the fluorescein. But for the most part, the fluorescein is extracellular. So what you look at is you look at uh, um, an, an image against a lighter background of the extracellular fluorescein that has uh, that has uh, become extracellular because of the leaking uh, and abnormal tumor blood vessels. And so uh, you see that there's a kind of a silhouetted appearance, um, but you still see within that silhouetted appearance a very good um, intrastructural or uh, cytostructural um, uh, components of cells, and you can make out the patterns of various tumors, as Dr. Spetzler has alluded to. Um, and. Uh, with regard to the Convivo, uh, the the other two, um, I didn't quite understand you, Frank, when you said those other two. But um, the the Convivo sees fluorescence in in a blue laser range, so it's it's effective uh, nanometer uh, um, uh, uh, excitation is about 488 nanometers, and so whatever you're going to see has to be seen within that within that laser range for uh, fluorescence. Okay. Yeah, maybe, Carl, if you can add to that from a technical perspective, I, I think maybe, maybe you can underscore what Dr. Poole has said in terms of the, the laser technology that's lying underneath. Yeah, of course. So um, I think uh, what Dr. Poole said is absolutely right. You know, whatever you can excite um, with a uh, 488 nanometer uh, blue laser, and then w the, the dye needs to emit somewhere in the green or yellow range or in the red that can be detected with uh, the Convivo. Now, in, you know, if you look at it again from a regulatory perspective, obviously this device has been tested together with fluorescein, and that's where we have also the market clearance. Um, everything beyond that can work from a technical perspective, but it's clearly, you know, it's it's really basic research. Uh, and I guess we heard previously, and uh, I think uh, Professor Schlegel, you mentioned it. Um, we need to. You need to think about, you know, how to clear these uh, labels first if you want to use them in vivo where the strength is of this device. <clears throat> Great. Um, good. So then we have one more question here in the chat at this point in time. Um, and I'd like to come back to Dr. Proulx maybe uh, because you mentioned um, also that, you know, the, the colleagues in gastroenterology have been using similar technology for quite some time. Um, and the question here is, have false negative and false positive studies been done? by the gastro colleagues using it for many years? <clears throat> and then is Convivo in use in neurosurgery and what are the false positive and negative rates? Um, so Convivo um, has not, well, it's it's the, the, the moniker Con Convivo, I guess, has not been used in gastroenterology so much. It's, it's previous uh, iterations in, in terms of OptiScan is where, um, uh, the gastrointestinal uh, applications have been done. Um, so let me just also uh, present to you a very interesting, because so, one of the neuropathologists in Manila asked about tagging, uh, looking at uh, looking at antibodies. Um, in, in Scotland, um, there is a center at the University of Edinburgh that has been very, uh, uh, that has been very forward in trying to um, distinguish between um, uh, between uh, uh, lung problems that are not bacterial uh, versus bacterial infections, and um, many of these these treatments uh, cannot be um, instituted right away. Uh, so they they have been able to tag the fluorescein with a very small molecule uh, that readily attaches to bacterial infections. And so they have been able to, uh, with this sort of technology, sort out patients very quickly um, that have uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome uh, from uh, very dangerous bacterial uh, pneumonias. And they provide then the, the uh, a discriminant treatment uh, 
uh, to those patients using this technology to scan in the lungs. So that is very much similar to something that can be done in the brain and that is being uh, researched at, at several locations with a specific tagging of, of tumor cells, which I would expect uh, to see uh, used with this machine in, in the not too distant future. Um, I think that that's, uh, that's, that's really quite a, quite a step forward. Um, and, and what was the other thing, um, Frank? Um, if there's, um, in neurosurgery, if there's any studies oh, that you're aware of yeah. that, that false positive and negative rates. So uh, we did um, a study uh, that was several years ago, uh, patients from Dr. Spetzler um, and uh, several of the other uh, uh, neurosurgeons that were doing tumor work here at the Barrow. And we uh, did a, a prospective study that uh, looked at the ability of the Convivo images of the OptiScan images at that time. So the, just the, the, the near predecessor to the, to the Convivo and how that compared to uh, frozen section and permanent histology. And um, it actually compared act very favorably. In fact, it was better. It was speedier, as Dr. Spetzler has alluded to. Uh, and an image within about 14 seconds uh, was, uh, was acquired that, uh, that informed the neurosurgeon and the neuropathologist what to do and what the tissue component was. That, that is a, a, an amazing step forward within 14 seconds. And within seven images, so when you use the machine, uh, there may of course be motion artifacts, but within, uh, within that first seven images uh, that the neurosurgeon was using, uh, an, an informational image came back. So the, the, the machine acquires an image about every one or two seconds, depending on your resolution that you send it to. That's within 14 seconds. That is an incredible, an incredible increase in speed versus waiting at the minimum 20 minutes for a, for a frozen section to come back. As far as false positives and false negatives, they were directly comparable to frozen section and to permanent section, if not a little better. Great. Thank you for that, Pro. Um, you know, with um, you, you mentioned this, and I think Carl, this next question goes to you. Um, you mentioned that in in the previous video as well. You know that AI is now getting into this new technology. There's there's new technology that we can now deal how to deal with these digital images. Um, there's a, a question from Dr. Yaran Ryan, and he's asking: Are there any future projects in combination with the in vivo application using AI in the years to come? Yes. Um... Exactly. I mean, uh, we, as, as uh, Professor Poole just mentioned, you know, you, you're seeing, for example, when you use it in vivo, you're seeing a couple of artifacts because you're moving the probe and so forth. And you don't, you know, these images then are sometimes useless. So what we have already established is a filter using artificial intelligence to recognize these images and just highlight it. So, you, you know, looking at and wasting time, uh, wasting your time with these images. And of course, this is just the very first initial step. So clearly, you know, um, with any type of uh, digital imaging uh, AI, you know, it makes sense to to look into this direction. There have been uh, initial and there has been initial work uh, done both at uh, BNI and also at uh, the university in, in Mannheim in Germany, I'm aware of, but there are also from other areas of uh, confocal endomicroscopy, I was thinking in the, the oral region, there was also some work on artificial intelligence um, algorithms, and it has been shown that it can be applied very successfully. And, um, you know, the more data we collect, obviously, and the better we can interpret these images, and that ties back to the initial part of our discussion, you know, how to how to interpret these images. First, we need to learn. That's where we are at, kind of, right now, pathologists can label these images and then they later on have a tool um, that helps them uh, to, to be even faster than today. And that's really what I think, you know, what, what this means, you know, even if you have an artificial intelligence tool uh, available, um, this, this, I think, in my opinion, does not mean, and, and we can further discuss this in this group, does not mean that, you know, we get rid of the neuropathologist. It's just, um, because what we see and, and what was emphasized previously also is that this connection of the team that we are now creating is also an added value and the artificial intelligence will just strengthen this and not disrupt that. 
<clears throat> okay, um, maybe Carl, let me stay with you because you probably have the best overview. Um, there's a question from Venkat. He's asking a list of installations across the globe. Um, it could be with or without the two more workflow that SAS is offering. Yeah, so um, I mean, we are working with uh, quite a number of centers, a uh, number around 10 globally. And um, what we, what I said earlier, you know, once you, you are interested in the product, once you want to become a customer, and also uh, once you purchase um, uh, this device in the early access package, you will become of this, uh, a member of this community. And we will definitely, you know, want to uh, connect all of the sites, um, uh, given that we are facing, you know, that you're working with a very, um, new technology, it's, it's very important that all these users uh, are, are connected. <clears throat> Great, thank you very much. Um, I think this concludes all the questions I at least see at the moment in, in the chat function. Um, so um, if there's nothing else, let me just look if there's anything else coming in. If, if not, then I would like to sincerely thank um, all of the, the panelists on behalf of SAIS, uh, Dr. Spetzler, Dr. Pruhl, Dr. Schlegel, and, and, and Carl uh, for, for presenting and being a, uh, available for this Q&A session. Also to the Barrel, you know, for, for the long-term um, interaction with us on this new technology and how we bring that now to the market. I know Dr. Schlegel, you're also very deeply involved with the European group. So thank you very much for your time and, and this collaboration. Um, we'd also like to thank all the, the people on, on the computers um, out there in the world. I, I know this is a difficult situation we're all in, but I hope you know with, with this new technology we can stay in touch and still deliver interesting content to you um, that, that's interesting. Um, if you have any additional questions coming up after this presentation, please contact your local size representatives. Um, they will then forward the, the questions to call. Uh, Kutler and his team, and they, they will get in contact with you. Um, obviously, the, the launch video that, that we have currently, uh, that we have recorded for this session, will be made available to all of you. And now for all of those who still have uh, maybe a minute or two left over in, in your busy schedules, there will be a, a, a short video about the, the two more workflow that we just alluded to that ties together the Kinevo 900, the Convivo, and then the Intrabeam 600. So if you have some more, some more minutes in your, in your schedule, Please, please stay tuned. Um, aside from that, we hope to stay in touch with you virtually or in persona, depending on how this uh, entire situation develops going forward. Uh, but please rest assured that there will be more content coming from our end. There will be additional add-ons to this uh, neuro to this pathology solution from size in the fall. So we, we stay in, touch, in, 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 in contact with you from that perspective. Um, aside from that, I, I wish you all a, a great remainder of the day. Stay healthy and hope to see you soon. Thank you from Seisen Oberkochen. Bye-bye.